Shovel Knight is the most important game to come out in recent years, and I'm here to tell you why. Okay, so I know Nathan already made a video about Shovel Knight, and if you haven't seen that already, definitely check out the annotation above here. But I just wanted to dig a little deeper into the game and find out what makes it so fucking good. So not only is Shovel Knight fun and colorful and worth any and all money you can throw at it, but it's also one of the most important games that has come out in recent memory. Today, I want to talk about a little thing called conveyance. Yeah. A lot of you probably already know what conveyance is and why it is important to game design. But for those of you that are out of the loop, here's the deal. Conveyance is defined as the transfer of property from one person to another. With regards to video games, this commonly refers to the game designers teaching the player the rules and expectations of the game. There are effective, natural ways to explain things to players, and there are some not-so-amazing ways. Basically, you want to teach the player about the game without the player realizing they are being taught so that it doesn't take them out of the experience. For more information on this concept, make sure to watch Ego Raptor's Sequelitis series. He breaks it down far more eloquently than I could ever hope to. But AP, what's that got to do with Shovel Knight? You may ask if you have no ability to extrapolate video content from the title and description. Short answer? It did good. It did so fucking good. Shovel Knight does a great job of setting you up with an intro level that doesn't feel like a chore. This game doesn't stick you in a secluded box and beat you over the head with training prompts until you prove yourself worthy of actually playing the fucking game. After a series of short intro cards explaining what little backstory you need to actually give a shit, Yacht Club Games let you right into it. They know why you're here, so they don't put you into a torrent of text explanations. Shit no. Get out there. Go adventure. You start off as Shovel Knight drops in all stylish-like, and then boom, go right. There's a pile of dirt on the ground. You attack it, and jewels come out. Okay, cool. You can actually dig with your shovel, and you'll get treasure if you do. Next, there's a bug moving towards you. You hit the attack button, that fucker's done for. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this is basic stuff, but even if you can infer all this based on your previous gaming knowledge, it still does a great job of dialing you in for the experience you're about to have. You're getting acclimated to the world of this game. Magical, isn't it? Okay, so you keep moving to the right, jumping over pits and killing beetles, and you come across this blocked off path. Now, these blocks are a different color than everything else around them. So you swipe at them with your shovel and boom, you can break bricks. Look at all this learning we're doing. So now on the very next screen, when you see the same blocks, but you can't do a down swipe at them, the logical step is to down jump pogo attack of doom. Oh yeah, you can downward attack from the air. So on this next screen, when this asshole bubble is fucking up your Christmas, you can go ahead and try out your new little move and oh, would you look at that? Would you look at that, Sandy? He did it. You can pogo jump off some objects to get higher. You can begin to see a trend with this, I'm sure. We are given just enough information to continue on and test our new abilities on environmental hazards. This is a trend that's going to continue throughout the game. All the finer points of combat and progressing are introduced in these moments. Anytime a new threat is introduced, it's close to a checkpoint, so you are never punished too harshly for having to figure shit out on the fly. Like with any good game, Shovel Knight uses its first level to lead you to discovering the basic skills necessary to progressing. The intro level then kicks things up a notch. Near the last checkpoint, you are presented with a few optional areas that really test your platforming ability and the skills you've picked up so far. It's like the game designers are beating us on saying, Oh yeah, you think you've got this? Well, there are going to be secret areas and challenges ahead, so if you want to get all the good shit, you better prepare yourself. Finally, you pass the final checkpoint for the stage, and we come face to face with the Black Knight. Basic stuff here, we know he's the bad guy, he calls you names, he's dressed in black and red, he's got that Kafka-ass laugh. <laughs> up top you will notice something very important. His health bar fills up, and you see that this guy is stronger than you, but just barely. This is the first boss battle in the game, so it's okay if you don't beat him on the first try. That checkpoint is right there, so it's never long before you're right back at him. Finally, through some tricky trial work and persistence, you get the best of him. Fuck yeah! You feel good because you had a victory and it was with skills you picked up learning the game. And that will always give you more satisfaction than shooting glowing parts of some boss or listening to your teammates' hints. You are then treated to a dream sequence to focus you back in on the story. 
but you know that this is the first step of your journey. To reinforce that point, you get to the map and see that you have a long way to go. But as shown to you in the Black Knight fight, with a little ingenuity and some luck, you can come out victorious. The explanation of game mechanics in clever ways is continued throughout the rest of the game. In the Lair of the King Knight, you encounter some blocks that you have to break, stopping your forward progress. This gives you enough time to see that there is a pot pouring lava every so often, so you can plan accordingly. In the Lich Yard, you come across these plants and naturally attack them, shooting them up into the air. Your next instinct is to downward attack them, and now you know how to use these plants later to progress through the level. When you go to the Explodatorium, you start running forward. No shit! My point is, none of these things are communicated to the player via text box or separate tutorial. You encounter these things naturally in the world, but the way in which you encounter them allows you to learn how to deal with them as you go, and that's a trait we don't see too often anymore in games. Game designers seem all too content to make a few pop-up instructions, floaty button prompts, or flat-out show-me-the-answer vision, as opposed to creatively conveying their ideas through the game itself. Shovel Knight is the most successful crowdfunded game we've seen so far, so it's inevitable that we're going to see other developers try to emulate what it has to offer. It's not going to surprise me when we see other retro-style games pop up that are going to try and cash in on Yacht Club Games' success, but honestly, I couldn't be more excited for it. I can only hope that this will lead game designers to make fun, colorful, creative, beautiful games with ideas and rules that the player are led to, as opposed to being force-fed via text and tutorials. Let me explore. Let me dig up treasure. Let me save the fucking world. That's what I want to do as a gamer. And that is exactly what Shovel Knight lets me do. So what do you think? Is Yacht Club Games going to push other developers to convey their ideas of their game in a more creative, effective manner? Do you have an example of good or bad conveyance in games? Go ahead and leave us a comment below and let us know. Oh, and if you like what you saw in this video, why not give us a little like and subscribe. Thanks, friends. See you next time. I'm back, guys.